Welcome to HDTV. You're now rocking with your boy. I mean, when when is it gonna be enough, man? You know. All these coaches, and also shout out to Phillip Rivers, he's retiring. Um, but all these coaches, um, Urban Meyer considers considering Raheem Morris for Jaguars defensive coordinator. Um, Raheem Morris interviewed to be a head coach of the Jaguars. He might take the DC as a con consolation prize. Morris is a candidate for Jaguars defensive coordinator and will meet with Jaguars head coach Urban Meyer this week. Josina Anderson reports, after finishing the 2020 season as the Falcons interim head coach, Morris interviewed to get that job on a permanent basis, but Arthur Smith was chosen instead. Morris also interviewed for the Jaguars head coaching job. Morris was the Buccaneers head coach for three seasons and has had several stints as a defensive assistant. So th this is the thing I'm saying. Okay, this is what is pissing me off. You guys get mad at the dumbest things. Y'all don't even pay attention to what it is. You guys don't pay attention to how the ball spins, as I would say, or where the ball drops. You guys don't pay attention to that. You guys are so caught up in certain stuff. And this has been going on forever. This has been going on forever. This has been going on at the beginning of time where coaches don't get any love. There are more black assistants and NFL players in the league than it is general managers or owners or even head coaches. It's only like, it's Mike Tomlin. Um, now they're talking about Saleh, that guy who's Muslim, but I'm like, he's not black, he's Muslim. <laughs> he's not a black American, he's Muslim. There's a difference, white people. <laughs> So they tried to make that seem like, oh, that's a minority hire. <laughs> you know what, man? The NFL and NBA are both having this problem. And it's a condition that we're conditioned to not follow the black coach. It's a condition not to follow your black boss at work. You know, it's a condition that you've been taught that the white man is the be all, see all. That they're the figurehead, that you're supposed to follow them. You're not supposed to listen to the black guy say, yo, this is wrong. You need to run this play right. You're going to look at him like, all right, whatever. But when Coach Tibbs comes in or, or a white coach come in, Seems like the, the Negroes fall in line, right? The Negros, the Negros fall in line. And then reports like to come out saying, oh, he was lazy or he wasn't setting the right plan or or um, what's another thing they like to say? Oh, he's difficult to work with. That's the classic line, especially in Hollywood. What's another one they like to say? Um, oh, well... Well, um, you know, he didn't have the right sets of plays. You know, he wasn't running the right stuff. You know, it's always something, but, but, you know, but, but, you know that, but now, but now, you know, it's okay for, um, guys to jump from a job to another job. Like Adam Gaze could jump from a job to another job. North Turner was doing the same thing. You know, it's cool for Mike McCarthy to go sit down for a year and then come back to another job. <laughs> you know, th this is what it is. Raheem Moore should be a head coach. He should be a head coach 
Ty Bowles and Anthony Lynn should still be their coaches at where they were at. They were given rookie QBs <laughs> and given bad talent. Like, why is it always the brother got to have bad talent? It's a shame. Just like with Paul Silas in Houston. Like, Paul Silas Jr. finally got a coaching job after how many years? Look, Raheem Morris did a lot for that Atlanta team during the stretch. He had them play tougher. They were playing tough against everybody. The problem with Atlanta has been you have held on to Matt Ryan too long. <laughs> you held on. After that Super Bowl, I would have put Matt Ryan on the trade block. Well, the season after the Super Bowl, after that Super, after that, after the, on the Super Bowl the year after that, I would have put him on the block and moved on. But. No, they didn't want to do that. But Raheem Moore stepped in, did a good job. And in Tampa, he had Tampa in the right track. They had one bad season, I believe, under him. And then they let him go for that Greg Schiano guy from Rutgers. He was about to get his head caved in because he had his guys, even at the end of the game, when it's out of reach or over, still trying to go at the legs when guys are trying to kneel. He got them still trying to go at the legs and play hard. Like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> After that, nobody liked them. They made it personal to beat Tampa by 30. <laughs> but it's, but this is what it is. Like, he interviewed for the Jacksonville job. They didn't let him get it. They was like, we're going with Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer, a guy who only coached in college, gets the job. Before Raheem Morris? Are you kidding me? What has he done? What has Urban Meyer done in the league? Huh? And we already know they ain't gonna hire Eric B. Enemy. Eric B. Enemy just ain't gonna get hired. This is the notion, people. You guys talk about what Jackie McMullen said about we're property. We are property. We're property of the United States. <laughs> we are property. Now, can we change that? Yeah. But none of y'all want to come together and change it. Y'all talk a big game, but y'all don't want to do it. Y'all want to try to include everybody instead of including the right people. You guys follow all these actors and entertainers, all these athletes, and then what have they done? Have you ever heard any athletes speak up for black coaches? No. You haven't seen none. Everyone going to be like, well, look at what LeBron did. He got Tyron Lue. I mean a real coach. <laughs> not no babysitter. Not no guy just to be there to make you look like you're the greatest of all time because you're carrying him. No, stop it. <laughs> no. Got to do better than that, people. Got to do real better than that. And don't bring up Mike Brown, <laughs> another lame duck coach. Don't bring him up. I mean real coaches who can coach, like a Sam Cassell. Mark Jackson can coach. Fizdale, to me, got fired prematurely. <laughs> Um, who else out there? You got, um, it's a lot of black coaches out there that should get the chance to coach. But you guys don't say nothing. You athletes don't speak up. That's why I don't follow athletes or follow entertainers. So you have to look and read between the lines. It's not just football, it's basketball as well. We got too many brothers, like my dog Germ, like my boy, you know, Cliff, like my girl Tracy, and all of these people who are brainwashed, who are falling for 
the, the tokenness instead of looking at the realness. They don't like a certain person because why? They, they, they say what they say, they say how they feel, but then when they're docile and they're not speaking up for stuff, then it's a problem. You know, you guys blasted Kyrie Irving <laughs> all the time. Now, Jern talking about, well, LeBron could be doing stuff behind closed doors. No, he's not. Because if LeBron did something, Jern, LeBron's going to post it. That's the type of dude he is. He's narcissistic. He needs you to feed his attention. He needs his ego fed. <laughs> You guys don't like these ball players today because these ball players are speaking up. They're talking back to the media. They're talking back to others because they can. They got the power to do it. But the problem is your boy LeBron had a chance to do a Malcolm X moment. He had a chance to shut me up and shut all the other LeBron, the whatever you call them, LeBron hater group. You call us the LeBron haters. He had a chance to shut us up. This dude ran back to the bubble with his tail between his legs because he knew. His bosses came down and said, look here, boy, if you don't do what you do, we're going to take that money from you and we're going to destroy your name. That's what they're going to do. And he can't handle it. He can't handle pressure. But I went off topic, but, well, not really, because this is about, you know, blacks not getting the opportunities to lead because black folks ain't going to follow minorities aren't going to follow a, min a minority um manager or supervisor they're not <laughs> they're not going to do it because they see the white man as the almighty temple the almighty being and it's messed up that we're conditioned like that we're conditioned to follow what the white man says or the white woman says now jackie mcmullen the reason why i didn't come down on her is because she was right <laughs> she's white but she was right in this instance they pay you these millions of dollars you are property my job that i'm property now can you walk the hell off your job? Hell yeah, you can. But guess what? You ain't coming back ever again. You'll never be hired with that company again. That's why they do two weeks notice. So you could give them two weeks to fill your spot. And then when you leave, you'll be on good terms to come back. So... That's the thing I'm trying to say. You guys are missing the big picture. You guys keep looking at the little things. Why do you think Kyrie is so standoffish with the media or KD or Harden? Because the media bashes them. But over here, LeBron James gets a bib in his mouth. He's not getting bashed. Because if he gets bashed, oh, you're done interviewing with him. LeBron's cutting you out the loop. It's over. And that's just how it goes. All of this stuff is controlled. It's WWE. It's controlled. Basketball has continued to fail because you're not promoting your talent. Now, in football, football is a slave system. That's how they run it. The owners are the slave owners. Then you got your token Negroes who are the assistant coaches. You put them as assistant coaches and you got your head figurehead, which is the white coach. And then you have the leader of the team. He's the white guy. He puts all you Negras in your spot, in your place to do what you got to do. Raheem Moore should have a coaching job. Anthony Lynn should not have been fired. He should have stayed at his job. And Bowles shouldn't have been fired. They should have been given a chance. A head coach should get at least five years to coach. And then if it's time to move on, that's when you move on. And that's when it should be done. So all this notion of we're making changes. You know why I don't celebrate MLK's birthday? 
because we haven't changed. We haven't made progress. What progress have we made? We ain't made no progress. I don't celebrate Black History Month. Mother F on black every goddamn day. I celebrate black history 365, 24-7. I celebrate MLK, his death, and Malcolm X at the same time every day. I celebrate them brothers. I celebrate Mega Eggers. I celebrate all of those who have fallen, if I didn't mention their name, who died. There's some people you may not even heard of who died trying to fight for rights. And you know what we do? We too busy trying to say, oh man, I gotta go, I gotta go over here, you know what I'm saying? Yo, I gotta get this done, you know. Man, I ain't worried about that. I'm all for me. I'm all for me. You know, we praise the token Negroes. And that's what Malcolm X was saying. Unless you get past them, you're gonna continue having this problem. The NFL players, they don't speak up for black coaches. The NBA players don't speak up for black coaches. They don't because they're conditioned to follow the white guy. Jack Vaughn should have been hired for the Brooklyn Nets over a goddamn Steve Nash. Nash ain't pay no dues. All Nash did is play basketball. Now, if you're talking about the better player, oh, yeah, Steve Nash was the better player. But as far as coaching, Jack Vaughn didn't even get a chance in Orlando before they iced him. And then they brought Scott Skiles, and then they got rid of him, and then they brought in Steve Clifford. It just shows you that blacks don't have enough leash. Now, there's some black coaches who they're just trash. They just got to go <laughs> because they, they don't show any type of oomph for the position. But the thing I'm saying is, Give them the same shot again like you give these white guys. I'm going to put my foot on the NBA and the NFL for the rest of the year. Raheem Moore should have got a coaching job, head coaching job, and Jock Vaughn should have got a head coaching job. That's fact. Sam Cassell should have got a coach. Sam Cassell should have got a coaching job over Ty Lue. Ty Lue ain't put in no work. He didn't put in no damn work. Sam Cassell was the better player, and Sam Cassell's been, been a coach longer than Ty Lue. So I don't even want to hear that, man. Yeah, Ty Lue black, but Ty Lue don't know a damn clue what he's doing. I'm out. Deezy.